Good morning. On time, look at you guys. By, you know, not following the realtor always be late rules. What? The realtor always be late rules, you know? I love it when you guys are on time. Well, I figure, well, I've got to open a house today. Oh, very good. Well, that's what good timing. We'll have a conversation. Maybe you'll have some big aha today that'll help you with that. And I'm going to have to uh, leave a few minutes early, too. All right. Joe, it's good to see you. How's your week been? Good. How about you? Very good. Although I, you know, I guess I'm just, it's going to be the last day of winter today, right? I hope so. It looks like it's chilly out. I haven't opened the door yet, but it looks cold. Yeah, I took the dogs out. It's chilly. It's March 21st. The what is March 21st? Time. The last oh, day. Oh, the first day of spring? Yeah. I, I don't know that that helps. I, I know that it's, it has snowed after the last day of winter. I also saw last night on the news that we're like 13 inches low for snow this year. Um, All right with that. Against the average. So awesome. All right, everybody say hi to Greg and Ning. They are new to our group joining us for the first time today. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Well, Happy to do. Greg, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? You're muted. Bottom left hand corner. Unmuted that already. Huh. There we go again. <laughs> every conference call, every WebEx. Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Greg McGraw. I live down in the Greenwood Center Grove area. Um, I just passed my test in January, joined up with Keller Williams February, well, March actually, uh, after a little bit of uh, interviewing. Felt like this was the right place to land. I am a dual career person, so I do have a day job, and um, I'm hoping that I can transition to this full time as quickly as possible. So that's why I think that the coaching probably makes the best sense, right? Get me up to speed fast. Okay. We're excited to have you join us. All right, Ning, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Ning, and I joined Keller William last year in November, but due to family emergency, I wasn't able to continue, but hopefully this time I can, um, with the coaching, I can like fully emerge into real estate. Love it. All right, guys, well, it's three after. We'll just go ahead and jump in because I value your time and other people as they show up late and they will, we'll just pop them in. So let's see. Let me get the screen started. Well, first of all, before we get started, somebody tell me, they may have any challenges this week that we want to work through. You might have any wins this week you want to celebrate. Everybody, I got your first listing. You got your first listing. Yay, Mary. Am I live? Yes. Are they blowing you up? Uh, there's four signs today. Uh -huh, so very far. Good. Put in an Op City offer last night. You put in, oh, awesome. All right. When do we hear back? Uh, one o'clock today. One o'clock today. Okay. That's exciting. All right. Love it. See, wins are good. Everybody had a win this week. I promised you, if you think hard enough, everybody had a win. So just because it's not a big one doesn't mean it's not an important one. All right. Let me get this started. I got my car back too. <gasps> the second oh, time. see? <laughs> That's a win, right? That that right there is a win. Big time. I love it. All right. Open house is what we're talking about today. So tell me real quick, how many of you guys uh, use your little your little uh, reactions hand down at the bottom and tell me how many of you have done an open house already? Let's see. We got Joe, Armand, Dan. Aaliyah, Miriam, okay, about half of you, we've done open houses. All right, we're gonna go through this. Um, so this class, the 23, uh, 20, 20, 36, 12, three class, 
um, was written in 2015. And so there's some great material in here. And there's some material we're going to we're going to pass through it a little bit of a clip so that we can get to something that's really going to be beneficial for you guys working your so I've got some add ins, I guess is what I'm telling you. So if I feel like if you feel like I'm going fast, if I'm going too fast, slow me down. Uh, and also Putting in the chat is hard for me to see because there's nobody monitoring the chat for me. So if you have a question or a comment, just pipe up. Just you know, just shout it out. Don't don't worry about interrupting me. All right, here we go. Skip all that. Skip all that. See, the first thing on there was ar arrive on time. You know, people are coming that are come. Oh, here comes Annie. She did. She missed the arrive on time thing. All right. First thing we have to do is the thing that we always do. I want you in your student book. Everybody got that from me yesterday, right? You have your book from today in your email. Um, I'm not sure what page that's on, but go in there and take a, an inventory. So since we met last Saturday, what did you do for your lead generation activities? And how much time did you spend doing those lead generation activities? So write that down for yourself. Anybody have an aha just from writing them down? All right, what was the most difficult part of lead generation this last week? Hey, Carla. Uh -huh. <laughs> so with my listing and my buy, and I'm also working with another buyer, um, I struggled with lead generation this week and just basically organization. So that was my struggle. All right, Joe, what's the one thing that you can do next week to make sure you get your lead generation in? Time block. <clears throat> block. Make sure you have lead generation on your calendar. If yeah. I were to, everybody grab your calendar out. Take a look, get your calendar, whether you've got it on your phone or your computer or you have a paper calendar, put your calendar in front of you. And look at your calendar for next week. If I were to look at your calendar, could I tell your goals? Could I see your goals from your calendar? Could I be able to tell what your goals are? We've learned in this class so far, and those of you that are joining me, this was new for you, but we've learned that the 36123 is actually a formula. It tells us that we can close 36 transactions in 12 months if we lead generate three hours a day. So 15 hours of lead generation every week will get us 36 transactions for the year. So Ning and Greg, we haven't set your goals yet, but you have an idea of what your transaction, what you would like. Let's say for instance, you wanted to close one a month, that's 12. If it's three hours for 36, then we can do the math and figure out that it's 12 hours a week, right, for 12. Or one hour, not 12 hours a week. One hour a day. I didn't know, do that math right, did I? One hour a day instead of three hours a day. So five hours a week would get us one transaction a month, which would be 12 for the year. Okay. So now look at your calendar. Do you have lead generation on your calendar to match your goals? Now, Dan, I know you've got it on your calendar to match your goals. Tell me what's your challenge. My challenge is honoring it um, and, you know, staying focused. I get sidetracked in the weeds on social media a lot of times. So I know we've talked about this in the past. What did you do differently this week around trying to stay more focused? Um, I tried to uh, time block my social media time so that I spend a half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening. Uh, and then I can get all caught up and it doesn't get interrupted. All right. And how did that work for you? Uh, it worked a little better. Um, I still had a couple of issues, but for the most part, it was a much better week. Okay. So what can you do next week that would make it even better? Uh, honor it. <laughs> honor my time block. <laughs> okay. Be really aware of it. Yes. So sometimes it's just a self-commitment. All right. Wh who else? Who? What was the dip most difficult part of your lead generation last week? Mine was just um, family obligations. Okay, family obligations. So do you have your lead generation time marked on your calendar? I do. 
Okay. And what, what time, I know you had, you had sick children. Yeah. Sick kids, like that kind of stuff really throws me off. So can you think of anything that you could do that would help you protect some, sometimes it's just, you know, God, family business. And sometimes family just comes first, right? I mean, sometimes that's yeah. just how it is, but can you think of anything that you could do next week that would help you preserve the time on your calendar or some of the time on your calendar for lead generation? Um, I have it blocked out. And so I really need to make sure that I really focus on not getting distracted during those times next week to make them really count. And then um, like for the weekend, I'm, you know, I'm missing swim meet stuff because I, I have to make it up. So I'm making it up today. <clears throat> okay makeup so i love that if you they, there's a bold law you have to erase you have to replace i love that all right anybody else have a challenge you want to share this week from your lead generation i will i need to make more phone calls you need to make more phone calls okay so that's the next question armand thank you what will you do differently between now and next saturday so think about what you did this week and then make a commitment to yourself. What are you going to do differently next week so that you make sure you hit your goals? Make more phone calls. Make more phone calls, Armand. How many more phone calls? I don't know. I, I probably ought to do that uh, 40 thing with uh, Joni and Jessica and whoever the, else. The dials, you mean? Are they doing 40 dials? So that's something you can do. You can count dials. You can count conversations. You know. The only thing is, is you also have to put the notes in, do the task, and set up the smart plans. Because if you don't do them, the next time you make a phone call on them, uh, you won't know where you're at. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you need to do that right when you're making the call, or can you make paper notes and then have um? a block of admin time after your lead gen time to make all of your notes and set up your smart plans. It takes less time to do it right away because it's fresh in your mind. It does, okay. Well then, and then what do you need to do to make sure you get enough calls in? I just need to work faster. Or put more time on your calendar? Um, and, and more, I need to stick to the gun instead of letting myself get distracted. Everybody tell me that, can everybody tell me the things that should be time blocked on your calendar? Personal. Lead generation. Lead generation. What'd you say, Dan? Personal time. Your personal time, right? You need your personal time on there. If you have another job, you need your other job time on there. What else? Follow up. Lead follow up. Your follow up, right? We have to keep our lead generation separate from our lead follow up. Why do we need our lead generation to be separate from our lead follow up time? They're just no so you do lead gen. What do you say, Annie? So you still do lead gen instead of yeah. spending all what the happens time if we up? only lead follow up once we get them all closed? Then what we have in our pipeline? Nothing. 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 Okay. So we have personal time, lead generation, lead follow up. What else? Needs Admin. To calendar? Admin time. Admin time. Mm -hmm. Which includes educational time. Yes, absolutely. What's the, what's the other one? Showings. <laughs> going on appointments. Yep. Now, why do we need to make sure we have time blocked on our calendar to go on appointments? So that we stay with our lead gen time. <laughs> so that we don't put our, exactly. So that we don't put our show, our appointments and our showings in the middle of our lead generation time. We can say things like, I already have something on my calendar at 10 o'clock. Could we do it at 1230? I have that time open for you. All right. So will you guys work on your calendar? Take a look at your calendar and make sure when you get your calendar all set out for next week, ask yourself, can I tell what my goals are? You should be able to look at your calendar. If you handed me your calendar, I can count up the amount of time that you have blocked off for lead generation and I should be able to know what your goals are. Does that make sense to you? Awesome. All right. All right, so today we're talking about open houses. So open houses are a really good way to add people to your database. We've been talking about 
our database. And we've talked about the number of people that we need in our database in order to meet our goals so that we have enough people to lead generate with. And we've talked about our mets and our haven't mets, right? So open house is where we're going to turn haven't mets into mets really quickly and hopefully more than one at a time. So we get to maximize our time as well. So we're going to take our haven't mets and they may be buyers or sellers. They're going to come to an open house, they become leads, and then they become mets. So that's where we are. So open houses are the easiest, simplest, fastest, and cheapest way to grow your business, according to Ron Kith Catherell. And I happen to agree when I was in production, and this is actually how I ended up becoming a coach. My number one source of leads outside of my database was open houses. I did open houses on Thursday night. I like to have two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Sometimes I didn't have five, but I always tried to have at least three a week. And that's the way I built my business. And for those of you that I think everybody here is Keller Williams, um, I didn't come in under the my way model. So I was in the full capping model and I capped in six months and it was all because of my open houses and I had a very a schedule around how I did it, but it was fast. I grew my business just like that. Who comes to an open house? People who want to buy houses. People who are thinking about real estate, right? They wouldn't show up at an open house if they aren't thinking about real estate. All right, so this is where we've been. And um, if you've missed any of these classes, they are on the, I, they, it's in the email that I sent you yesterday, but they're on the PC website at um, mykwpc.com and the resources. I also put a folder in the student materials for this class with all the open house information that I sent you yesterday. So we talked about the power of one. That's how we learned what we need to do with our, that we need to lead generate. That's our one thing that we have to do to be successful. We talked about our value proposition and what that looked like. We talked about prospecting, marketing, leveraging a database, working with our database. And then last week we talked about farming. So today we're talking about open houses. Next week we'll be talking about for sale by owner and expired. And then we're gonna talk about agent referrals. Then we're gonna talk about lead conversion and then we're gonna wrap it up. So that's where we are. For this series, we'll continue to have the workshop, but it will be something different after we finish this class. All right, open houses. Question, are you at an open house to sell the house or to pick up <laughs> buyers and sellers? What's the goal? Buyers, buyers and sellers, right? The likelihood that you are going to sell the house. So often I hear agents come back from an open house and they have lots of conversations around the house itself. And the house itself has some meaning to us uh, just because it's gonna, it's gonna attract the buyers. The kind of buyers that we attract are gonna be based on which houses we choose for an open house. But whether the house is overpriced, underpriced, none of that matters to us because we're not working to sell the house. That's the listing agents. Uh, job. We are just there to find buyers and sellers. So ultimately you're there to do both. There will be a few times where you'll sell the house, but for the most part, you're there for buyers and sellers. All right. This statistics. Now remember these statistics come from 2015, but I think these are probably pretty accurate. I don't think things have changed very much. So a hundred buyers, 44% um, percent of them visit an open house. And I think that's probably pretty known. And it says here that five of them um, we'll use the agent. Five of those 44 will use the agent from the open house. And on the other side, 39 of them will either already have an agent. So those of you that have had an open house, have you had that happen where you've had an open house and everybody that came through had an agent already? Yep. Or they told you they had an agent already? Yes. Okay. Or they're unrepresented. They leave un unrepresented. They aren't quite ready. They're in that moment when, you know, my, my analogy about walking into Best Buy or someplace with a salesperson, right? When you, furniture store, when you walk in the door, some salesman's going to walk up to you and say, can I help you? And what's your answer going to be? Just looking. Just looking 99 out of a hundred times, it's going to be just looking right. So that's think about that. Those agents that aren't represented, that's what they're saying to you is they're just looking. If they're just looking, who are they going to want to talk to? Who are they going to, when they're ready, who are they going to talk to? Whoever calls them last. 
Yes. The person that kept in contact with them, the person that has a relationship with them. So your job then is to figure out how to become that person to be the relationship. All right. So real quickly, somebody tell me what's the best open house you ever held or attended if you haven't held one. I had one that um, I did really early on and um, it was unbelievable. I, I had um, people lined up. I guess Zillow had the wrong time for the open house. It was like an hour early. Zillow posted it. So um, don't know how that happened. But when I showed up, there was already people waiting when I showed up like a half an hour early. And the whole time there was a line out the driveway. They were only allowing like, I don't know, so many people in at a time due to COVID. So there was people lined up and I had no one to help me. It was crazy, but I got tons of leads from that. So remind me, was that your very first open house? Um, I think it was my second. Your second. Yes, it was my second. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> but I lived and you I got lived. some leads. I got some buyers. Anybody else have one? A good, good open house story, Armand? Well, I uh, had one and I still got a couple of customers uh, or leads uh, that are in my uh, database from it, but uh, I had 13 couples come through and in a two hour span and it was as much as I could do to keep up with the people, so. And that's fun when it happens. I'll tell you a fun story. So I told you that I like to do open houses on Thursday nights. I had a full-time job. I was a dual career agent. And so Thursday nights worked really well for me uh, and my schedule for my other job. And I would call people and I would say, I'd like to hold your listing open on Thursday night. And I had this agent once tell me, well, you can do Thursday night, but nobody's going to come. I sold that condo that night. I only had two people come through. One had an agent, one didn't. And I sold him a condo. So you never know. I, um, I had, I've had open houses where I've sat for two hours and I love that time because again, I was dual career and I, that was, that was dedicated real estate time. No, you know, the only, in, the only distraction I was going to have is if somebody came to the open house. So I could get a lot of work done if nobody came making, making good use of my time. But I had sat for an entire two hours and nobody had came. And I was just finishing up. Actually, it was after the time of the open house. And this very sweet lady came to the door and she said, I, uh, I know I'm late, but is there any chance I can just take a peek? And I said, sure, no problem. Come on in. And she, we ended up, anyways, she ended up selling a $600,000 house with me and buying a $750,000 $750, house with me. So I sat there for two hours. You could get really discouraged. I sat there for two hours and nobody came. She came after the fact and now it took me a year and a half. It wasn't like the next month that we bought and sold, but I got into relationship with her. And actually she's a friend of my, mine now. I would consider her a friend. We, we, we have coffee every once in a while. So you, that's the story I would tell you. Anybody else, Miriam, you got any good open house stories? Not really done. I, I, one I did, I just had a couple people and then, um, the two I've done, same thing. Like they've not been, I haven't gotten anybody from them. Okay. So that goes back to my analogy about the, about the seashells, right? You got all these seashells and you got to turn them all over to find the ones that have money under them. So that happens. The other thing is when nobody would come to the open house, when, if nobody came to the open house, there was usually a direct correlation to how much prep time I did and how much I didn't do. So we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. All right, so there's a myth that open houses are only for new agents looking for buyers. Well, that's not true. And I just told you a story. You can absolutely get sellers from your open house. So you can get buyer leads and seller leads from your open house. Is it possible that somebody, now you're gonna be, depending on what house you choose, right? To hold open is going to determine maybe what kind of leads you get. If you choose to hold a, I don't know, a $200,000 starter home, are you likely to get seller leads? 
You so. might. What could you do to make sure you got seller leads if you were doing a two hundred thousand dollars starter home? Call the neighbors. Call the neighbors, right? Call the neighbors, invite them over. Then the neighbors come, and now they might think they would like to sell as well. All right, I, here's another myth. I don't have any listings, so I can't have an open house. How do you get an open house? Call the listing agent. Call the listing agents. Absolutely. You can call the listing agents. Now, we're all Keller Williams. Truth of the matter is we probably, probably need to call Keller Williams agents because it's very unlikely that another brokerage, it could happen. You could always ask, what's the worst thing they can say? No. No, no big deal. Um, so the other thing in this market, and I'm, I'm just going to encourage you that well, in this market or really any market, if you're going to do the prep time on the front end, it's nice if you don't get canceled. Has anybody had that happen where they scheduled an open house and that pen did and it got canceled? Yep. My three pointers to make sure that that doesn't happen. It doesn't guarantee that it won't happen, but it's helpful. Uh, one is that you choose vacant or staged homes. And how can you tell if a home is staged in the pictures? What would you look for? Look at the closets for one thing. Closets, kitchens, bathrooms. Those are the pictures that are going to help you see uh, if it is staged or not. So you want to look for vacant or obviously staged. And then you want to say to the listing agent, even if it pens, is the seller going to be okay if I go ahead and have the open house? You know, you might need a backup offer or even if you don't, if it's okay, because I'm going to do some prep time on the front end, would that be okay? And if it's vacant, there really isn't any reason why they shouldn't be able to say, yeah, that's okay. Now, if you end up with an occupied home and you, I would ask the same question, is there any chance that the sellers would agree to still let me hold it open if I do all the work on the front end, maybe get you a good backup offer? And they may or may not say yes or no. Now, if it gets canceled, was it a loss? Not necessarily, because it gave you a reason to call the neighborhood. Absolutely. You can say, well, I was the agent that I had called. I, I was going to uh, have an open house this weekend. And guess what? It sold. It sold so fast. So we have more buyers. We have more buyers for the neighborhood. Do you know anyone else in the neighborhood who would like to sell? Right. That's the script that you use there. So you can turn it into a win for you, even if it happens. Yeah. Here's the thing. So what do you think you do at an open house? It's not a matter of just sitting in an open house. You're going to work the open house. And we're going to talk about what working the open house looks like. Um, so this is just somebody's story. It's in your book. If you want to read the story, you can, you can do that. So the other thing to think about at open houses is referrals, right? So even if they tell you, oh, you know what? We're just out looking. I like to look at houses. Has anybody ever told you that? Those of you that have an open house, has anybody ever told you? Yeah, I'm not really looking to buy or sell. I just like looking at houses. That's awesome. Do you know anybody else who likes to look at houses? Because I'd love to talk to them. You know, do you happen to know anybody who might need to move this year? I really like that script. Instead of saying, do you know anybody who need, wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? You know, do you know anybody who'd like to move this year? And if you're at a price point that's, you know, in an investment range, you could say, do you know anybody that likes to invest in real estate? Look for, help them give you a referral. Um, so you have to set a goal for your open houses. And then you have to do everything that you can do to get as many people there as possible. The more people that are there, go back to that hundred people, five of them, right? Five out of a hundred, five percent is going to be who is your uh, potential clients. So if you want to make sure you get a lot of potential clients, what do you have to do? Talk to them, uh, nurture them. Get a yeah. lot of people there. You yeah. have to get a lot of people there first, right? Right. All right. Um, all right. So then here we go. The open house, what this is going to look like. We're going to prepare. We have to get. Uh, we have to have a system. Like everything that we do, we need to just have a system. I told you I did three to five a week, and I had a very set system. I did the same thing every week. I knew exactly what I needed to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I knew exactly what I was doing every week for my open houses. 
And the first thing I had to do is I had to decide which house I wanted to hold open. So on Mondays, I would go into the multiple listing service and I would look at all of the available Keller Williams listings and I would choose homes that were vacant or obviously staged and were in a price point that were likely to get me the kind of clients that I wanted to work with, that were in neighborhoods where I wanted to work. Now, step number three, I'm really not sure what this is. And so I'm just gonna tell you, sometimes you'll get to the house a little early and you might see that this needs tidied up or this needs moved or whatever. I think number three really comes into play when it's your own listing, right? When it's your own listing, you might talk to the clients about curb appeal and those kind of things like you normally would. You need to prepare to build relationships. And here's the thing you need to know. You need to know the market you need to know the neighborhood. You need to know what else is going on in the neighborhood. Now, how are you gonna find that out? Research it. Yeah, get in the MLS. Look at what, what are some of the things that you would research so that you would feel comfortable knowing what the neighborhood, what was going on in the neighborhood? Market report. A market report, love it. Sold, sold. What's sold? What has sold in the last 180 days and how quickly, right? Days on market. What else? Ask people that you're calling uh, like the neighbors. The neighbors. Yeah, call the neighbors. Ask them what's it like to be in the neighborhood. I'm having, that's great, Armand. I'm having, an, I'm, that is awesome. I never did that. That should have been in my script. I'm having a, an open house in your neighborhood. And I just wanted to ask you what, in case anybody asked me, what, what's it like living in your neighborhood? That's awesome. Great question. What else? How about if there's anything else listed? How about other available open houses? gifts that you can give before they walk out of the door. Well, if this house wasn't the right house for you, would you like a list of other open houses in the area? I'll text it to you. Give me your phone number. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. and Particularly if they're less than the one that you're putting on. If you got one that's flipped and the other open house does not, that's a good one to recommend them to go see. I would recommend them to go see any, right? Because I've got their information and I know that the likelihood that the agent at the other, I know that the likelihood that the agent at the other open house I send them to, it's very unlikely that they're going to create a relationship. I knew that I was going to create a relationship because I had a system to create a relationship. So I was never worried about sending them on to another open house. And we're going to talk a little bit about safety as well. I think that's an important thing that we need to have. All right. So set a goal for open houses. Uh, you just need to know what you want to have out of it. More importantly here, what you need to know is how many open houses do you want to hold a month? Set a goal for yourself, right? How, um, how many clients would you like to get from your open houses? We know that about 5% of the people that come to an open house can become your client. So you can figure that out that way. How many people do you want to get to your open house? Figure out your schedule and then figure out your system. Um, all right. How do you choose an open house? Right now, it's anything that's available. <laughs> In a different market. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's true. In a different market. You want, what do you think? What do you think of some things that would, if you had two open houses and you were weighing one up against the other, what would make one better than another? Days on market. Days on market. Uh-huh. Armand? Location. Location. Tell me a little bit more about location. What would we be looking for? Uh, you would be looking for uh, a house that is uh, not too far off the beaten path. Um, you do not want one that zigzag, you have to zigzag through the neighborhood to get to the house. Not unless you have 40 open house signs, right? right. <laughs> Uh, and, and then you also want to be able to connect. So if you have, let's say you have six signs, that's all you have. You want to find one that is going to take you to a major throughway with the signs. So you're closer to the edge of the neighborhood and you want to get out not only to the little bit more Main Street beaten path, if you want to call it that, 
but you all also want to try to get assigned to the uh, major thoroughfare. Right. Yes, Miss Annie. Well, I agree, but I think in today's day and age, um, if you don't have enough signs, it's going to be okay, because I've had some that are way back in communities. People have GPS. If they want to see the house, they're going to find it. Well, they so, do, but, um, but what do directionals get us that, that GPS and all of that won't get us? People just driving by. The drive-bys, right? right. So we don't get those. That's, that's, that's what you're getting with the directional signs. I agree with you, Annie. Somebody wants to see it, they're going to find it. But if they don't know about it, that's what our directionals get us. So our directionals are likely, the more signs you put out, the more, the more, if people see your signs and that's why they come to your house, is it more or less likely that they have an agent? Less. Less likely that they have an agent already, right? So the more signs you can put out. Now, sometimes, so Kelly and Dan are doing an open house this weekend and I had to call the HO, it's a, it's a listing that I listed for an agent in referral. Um, I don't know, Joyce Voorhees, you guys may, some of you guys might remember her from coaching. Anyways, um, she, uh, that uh, HOA has, a, has restrictions. And so I had to call the HOA to find out where I could put signs. So we want to be very careful about signs. Um, let's just talk about signs while we're here. It may come up here in a minute. Yes, Greg. Uh, might you also select, if you had a few options for the open house, the one that's going to be the less cumbersome to show? So the one that shows better, that's less yeah. cluttered, maybe there is a safety concern, right? Maybe it's, it's an area that has, had, has a higher crime rate, although you still might need to show it for inventory purposes. You just might want to lean one direction given hot topics in that area. Absolutely. You're going you're gonna to make your choice based on what's likely to get you the kind of client base you want. You know, if you if you want to work with first time home buyers and that's your target market, should you be doing five hundred thousand dollar listings for your open house? If you really would like to work with investors, you know, you think about what what your ideal client would choose. And that's that's what you'll be looking at there. Let's talk about signs for a minute. Um, this was a big thing that I did is that if I put a sign in someone's yard, like the person on the corner. I always knocked on the door and I said, and I wasn't a door knocker, but this is a door that I would knock on. And I would knock on the door and I would say, I'm having an open house at your neighbors down the street. And I have a sign so that people can find it. And I was gonna put it out here on the corner of your property. And I just wanted to see if I could get your permission. And they would be blown away. They would tell me that people put signs in their corner of their yard every, every weekend and nobody had ever asked permission. I mean, I, I bet I heard that more often than not. Now, if nobody answered the door, I had a note in my car, pre-printed up note that I would leave on the door and I would say, I'm having an open house. I, have, I was hoping to get permission, um, but you weren't here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a sign in your yard, but if for any reason you don't want the sign in your yard, would you please just text me and I'll come remove it? And again, I would get texts every once in a while that said, hey, this is a neighbor at so-and-so and it's fine. You, you're fine to have your sign there. Thanks for you know asking. And then the other thing that I always did is after my open house, part of my system was I sent thank you notes to everyone who uh, let me put a sign in their yard. I put them in my database and guess what they became? I met, right? They came somebody that I started building a relationship with. So, and this is also a good way to make your signs not disappear because if you just put signs in people's yards and you didn't ask permission, guess what happens? Sometimes people throw your signs away. Or they so become they, garage sale signs. They become garage sale signs, absolutely. All right. I'm gonna skip the stage, the house. I don't even, I don't, I don't understand why that's on here. All right, um, so. Think about what kind of questions are you going to ask? And I gave you guys some scripts in the email I sent you. And here in a little bit, we're going to look at those scripts. But um, you have to figure out what kind of conversations are you going to have when people come in? You need to figure out what is it going to take for you to build rapport? What you'll find if you... When I first started, I had never been to an open house and I wasn't sure what to think. And my coach actually suggested that I go out and just go to some open houses, not as a, you know, I just walk in and say, I'm, I'm a new agent, I'm previewing homes. And 
I paid attention to what other agents were doing and they were just letting people walk through the house. I don't know. They were trying, they were building their business by accident. Um, so if you don't want to build your business by accident, you're going to need to have conversations and you need to figure out how can you have a relate? What do you, what information do you need when they leave so that you can have a relationship with them? Contact information. The contact information. So you got to figure out how are you going to do that? There's a couple of different things. I, um, in your, let me see if I pull that up. In, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute and reshare. In your, um, in the email I sent you and in your folder, what you have in here is my open house sign-in sheet. And I had uh, red clipboards that I got from the dollar store and it had one of these on it. And when people came in the door, I would say, um, you know, thanks for coming. What brought you out today? You know, friendly questions, talk about the weather, whatever that is. And then I'd say, well, here, um, I know you're here to see the house here. If you would do the sellers a favor, they would really love your feedback on the house. So if you could, while you're walking around, fill this out and then, and then bring it back to me when you're finished. And if you have any questions, let me know. And then I would hand them the, the, the MLS sheet, the consumer version of the MLS sheet. I'd hand them that as well. And then when they bring this back, they pretty much always filled it out. Now, up at the top, they might not fill everything out. And so when they bring it back to me, if they only had their name on there and they didn't have any contact information, I would say, um, okay, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Now, can I get your email or phone number? I mean, I, I'm sure you understand, but for insurance purposes, we have to know who's come through the house. And pretty much they would if they didn't have it already filled out. And if they marked that they were working with a realtor, but they didn't put the realtor's name, I would say, oh, it's awesome you're working with a realtor. Can you tell me who it is? I'd like to send them a thank you for sending you my, sending them, sending you my way. And if they didn't know the name of their realtor, what do you think? Yeah. They're just looking, right? <laughs> They're just telling me I'm just looking. They don't have a realtor. So I would put them in my database. Now, if they gave me the name of their realtor and they, and they, I didn't put them in my database. I just still send them a thank you. If I had a, enough that I could send them a thank you, I would still send them a thank you. And I would send the realtor a thank you. Hey, your client came by for the open house. Sometimes you can find out they're not really your client that way too. They're like, I don't know who you're talking about. That's fun too, right? If they told me that so-and-so is the realtor and I send them a text message thanking them, I look them up in the MLS and I send them a thank you card. Why would I want to have a relationship with an agent in the MLS? The offers and, and, and buying, I mean. Absolutely. Co-op co relationships. Co relationships, what else guys? Referrals. Downline. Profit share, right? I want to build my passive income profit share. I want to have relationships. I took gifts to closing for the agent on the other side. I was constantly working to build my, my profit share tree. So absolutely. All right. So there's that. Now there's another thing that you can do. I didn't have this and we had um, a workshop. Um, I, we had a workshop maybe uh six or eight, nine months ago where Richard Greenfield came and taught this, but I thought this is so good and it's six minutes long. So if you guys don't mind, I am going to share with you the Marty Miller 66 day challenge video about setting up a QR code for your open house. This is something that you can do in lieu of my open house or in addition to, I don't know how that works, but I I'm going to share this and let's take a look at this together because this is so good. This is what happens when we have good technology. Are you seeing the screen with the video? All right, here we go. Taylor Williams and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 5.0 and today is day 63. So yesterday I introduced you to- We don't have the video. We've got your command screen. You don't have it? Today we're actually going to create- It's command screen. And That's all he's doing. For open house assignments. So we'll walk through that entire process by starting off, clicking on the consumer. Do you see him moving there? The last one here on our list. Okay. We're going to create okay. a new page. And again, we're going to choose it as a landing page and create. First thing we want to do is title that landing page so we know which one that is. So that's 2303 Gunston Court Open House Assignment. All right. So we're going to use this landing page for... Uh, 
guest at our open house. The first thing we want to do, I always recommend bringing in the branded header. If you are required to have your license number, et cetera, go ahead and bring in agent branding if you prefer. But I'm going to bring in the branded header. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in the lead form. And this is where people that are visitors to my open house are going to sign in. I'm then going to bring in information about the listing itself. So this is the actual details of the listing as soon as we can figure that widget. And then we're going to bring in the legal footer down here at the bottom. So we've got four widgets that are going to make up this specific landing page. And now we need to configure them. So configure widgets. We're going to configure the branded header to say, welcome to the open house. Right, so everything else looks good. So we're going to save and apply. And then we're going to go click on the right arrow, which will take us to the second widget. You can see we're on one of four widgets. So the right arrow takes us into the capture form widget. And the only thing we can modify on this is the header text. And prior to entry, please register here. Thanks. All right, so we'll click on save and apply. And then you can see here's their information, what they're going to put in. We're going to click the right arrow one more time. We need to browse listings and we need to find our listing so that we can have that information. And here's that listing. So we're going to go ahead and select it. And you can see we can choose a specific image and we're just going to choose that first one and save and apply. And now you can see that that widget has been set up. Finally, one more time, we're going to go to the legal footer. It should already be set up. So we'll click on save and apply. And now all four of our widgets have been completely customized for this landing page for a consumer to use when they sign in at our open house. So the next thing we're going to do is click on publish page. It's going to say, are you sure you want to update an active page? I'm going to say yes, update it. And then we now have inside of our landing pages, the 2303 Gunston Court Open House sign-in. And you can see this URL is https pages.kw.com slash Marty Miller. This is my KWUID. And then a bunch of kind of random stuff over here. If I wanna make the sense of this randomness, I can come over to the three dots and click on change URL. And then basically I can change this portion to 2303, oops, Gunston Court Open House. I'm gonna click on create. So now I've got a couple of options. When I'm at the open house, if I'm having guests walk in and I have my laptop or my service available, I can just have this specific link open on my laptop or my surface or my desktop, whatever it may be that I have at the open house. And I can hand it to the client and say, please do me a favor and go ahead and register here, right? And so they would come in and they would type in their first name and their last name and their email address and basically all that while I'm standing there so that I can then provide them access. Here's another thing that you can do. You can consider creating a wire for the front door that says, please register prior to entry and then create a QR code. And you can get QR codes online pretty easily, right? So if you go to QR code generator, and let's just use qr-code-generator.com, you'll see it's gonna say, enter your website. So we're gonna come back, we're gonna copy this, we're gonna put it here and paste it. And you'll see that it's already created, right? This QR code, and then we can download that and it'll be a second, right? We're gonna say, no, we don't want to register for your site. But in a second, we will get that QR code downloaded. And from there, you could then put that QR code on a flyer where the client walks up to the front door and it says, please register prior to entry. How many of us have been to a restaurant lately where we didn't have to scan a QR code? And then when they scan the QR code on their phone, they will get this same page and they would then need to sign in. Guys, here's the best part about using landing pages for open house sign-in. When they put this information in, it automatically comes into your KW command database. So you can quickly and easily see the leads that are coming in. In addition, on the landing page, you'll see 
how many leads have been created from that specific landing page as well. So that's another nice way to say, yep, I had six couples come through and they all registered and here are the leads from that open house. So again, a quick and simple way to use a custom landing page. You could do this. Maybe you have a first time home buyer seminar. Maybe you're hosting, um, I think someone did Whiskey and Wills, right? One of my clients, uh, the, the MAPS client of mine did a Whiskey and Wills event. They had a, a lawyer come and talk about uh, the importance of having Wills. They could use that kind of a sign in sheet, right? So it's a way just to capture information into your database without having to manually enter it later. It looks professional, it's branded to you, it's got all the information, and you can easily replicate it for, in this case, every open house that you might have. So that's a quick and easy way to create an actual landing page um, and then use it inside of your business. So, so that's it for today. Look forward to talking to you all again tomorrow. Hope you're all having a fantastic day as always. Do you find yourself oh, wondering stop. how brands post stop. engaging content so frequently? Stop. What do you think? Love it. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? It really is. And and then they just show up in your database. Yeah, the only thing I don't like uh, about using something like that is, uh, you know, if I were if I had a house in Carmel that was a four hundred thousand dollar house, I might. Uh, be willing to put my computer out front. I'm not sure I want to risk my computer though for a $200,000 house or $150,000 house. What do you mean put it out front? I don't might understand. Not be, might not my computer. Well, if you do the QR code, they're going to do it from their phone. The QR or, code, have you ever done the QR code in the, in the restaurant? You just take, you open up your phone. Everybody knows how to do it. You open up your phone and you take a picture, you open your camera and it'll take you straight to the website. So they won't, if you are, are at a $200,000 house, you're just going to put the QR code on the door or at the table or something and have them scan it right there. You could also, you could also put it on this open house sign-in sheet, right? Okay. You could do both. You could put it on the sign-in sheet. You can print the QR code on your sign-in sheet if you wanted to do I've, that as well. Yeah, I've never done a QR code, so. No, I, 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 did, I didn't QR either because I was, I, you know, we didn't have this technology when I was doing open houses, but if I were doing them now, I absolutely would because that takes out the data entry part on the backside, right? Now all I have to do is go set them all up on an open house smart plan and I'm ready to go. I think in the early part of the presentation, he did mention like hand him my laptop, hand him my slate. One and I, I thought uh, in the same fashion that Armand did, I was like, hand in somebody my iPad. I had a moment there. I was like, I don't know if I want to do that, but you can buy pretty cheap Androids and stuff these days for 150 bucks or so, put them in a nice little protective case. It's just multiple options, right? Whatever they're most comfortable with. Well, they don't need to walk away from you with it, right? You could be, you're going to have a table. I mean, this is what I would set up. I would have a table. I had a tablecloth that sat on it. Um, I had a little thing of mints. I tried different things. People go crazy and do cookies and whatever. I took water for a while. Nobody ever wanted water. I stopped carrying it around with me because it was just like extra. But I have a table, a little thing of mints, and then my clipboards. Instead of my clipboards, I would just have an iPad sitting there and I would say, well, could you just sign in here? And then, you know, and if anybody ever gives you pushback about giving you their contact information, what is something that you could ask them that would help them understand a reason to give it to you? How about, would you like to have strangers in your house and not know who was there, who had been there? All right, that question, anytime anybody gave me pushback. No, that didn't mean they gave me their, their honest information. I'm telling you people, if they're just looking, sometimes they're just looking and they really don't want me to find them. And that's the way it is. I had one guy that came, he creeped me out for a while. And then I just realized it was just, it was just odd. He came, he showed up at every open house I had for like six weeks. And he would never give me his contact information ever. It got to the point where I stopped asking because I recognized him. Um, and I don't know. He just liked to go to open houses, I guess. I mean, it was just really strange, but he wouldn't, he was really, he wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't give me his information. He would just walk around the house. And, you know, I got over my spidey sense concern because there was really no big deal. Um, just 
apparently liked to do open houses and was not a very nice person, but you know. Sounds a little that creepy is. to me. What'd you say, Joe? So it sounds a little creepy to me. In the first few times it was creepy and then after that it stopped being creepy. It was just like, oh, there you are. I said, oh, great to see you again this weekend. <laughs> it was like, no big deal. All right, so again, prepare your market information. So I would pull other listings these are the things that I would give them as a, if they weren't fill out this, if they aren't going to fill out my contact information, they aren't going to get anything from me. I'm just telling you, if, if they came through the door and they said, no, we're just looking and they didn't, they didn't take my clipboard and they wouldn't fill anything out. I don't give them anything. They can go look all they want. Right. It's fine. Um, but if they did do the clipboard, then I'm going to give them the MLS sheet. So they see the size, the measurements, and the price and everything for the house. And if they come back to me and ask for that, I'd say, well, I really need you to fill us out. Can you fill this out for me? And, and of course I'll give it to you, right? I'm just really nice about it. It's okay. You want something from me? I need something from you. Um, and then um, I also, when they would get done and they bring me the clipboard back, I'd give them a gift. I would say, would you like to have a list of I have two different lists here. You tell me what you what would be, help, be helpful for you. I have a list of other hope, open houses in the area today. And I also have a list of other homes in this price point. Would either of those be helpful for you? And that's when I could say, you know, well, you know, if, I love this. We learned this, Dan. I got, I picked this up. This will be a new, this would be a new script for me. The magic wand script. The ma I, I got to find it written somewhere, but I love this. We heard it at a mastermind from the leads program this week. And if I had a magic wand and could get you keys to your new home, when would you need them by? Isn't that a great script? Isn't that a much better way to say, when would you like to buy? If I had a magic wand and I could get you in your new home, when would you need your keys in your hand? When would you like that to be? So that's what you want to find out is, you know, now you're doing LP Mama. Does anybody remember the LP Mama script? It's in your folder as well. You're looking for location. Is this the location where you think you'd like to be? Is this the location where you think you'd like to purchase? Um, tell me what's P. Price. Is this the price, right? Is this the price point where you think you're going to be buying? And then here's another question to ask. How'd you come up with that price point? Have you talked to a lender? So that leads you right into the M for mama, right? What's the A? L, P, M, we M is mortgage, what's A? Are you working? With an agent. Are you working with another agent? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, I see L, P, M, A, what's the next M? Motivation. Motivation. That's the magic wand, right? That's the magic wand. And then the last A. What's the one thing you want to get? An appointment. Oh. Right? So we have the location, the price. Are they pre-approved for a mortgage? Are they working with an agent? What's their motivation? And I ask for an appointment. That's LP Mama. That is in your script folder too. I used to carry that around with me. It's a little piece of paper that I cut out like this. And I carried that around with me so that I could remember um, those points until they, until they got into my head, until they got into my head. All right. So Again, we talked about the neighborhood history. How are you going to get that? When you're calling around the open house, you know, ask people. I love that, Armand. Ask people, how do they feel? Do you have your hand up because you wanted to say something, Armand, or is that from before? Oh, that's from, I okay. forgot what that question was. All right. So some little packet of information to give them as a gift. That's what we're talking about here. Um, so think, ask yourself, when you're preparing this, when you're preparing this packet, ask yourself, what do you think buyers would want to know? And then, Take a seller packet with you, a pre-listing packet, your pre-listing packet with you, because if sellers come in, you want to give them something too. Do sellers want other open houses? Probably not. Do sellers want the neighbor, you know, what's going on? In the, they may want, maybe you just bring a CMA. Maybe if you don't want to do a pre-listing packet, you could do a CMA, right, for the neighborhood. And you could say, oh, you live in the neighborhood, right? So be prepared for what they might want. Um, all right, safety. 
in the email that I sent you and in the folder for open houses, there is a very big, long safety checklist. And we're going to switch from this sheet and we're going to go to that one. Nope, not that one. Hang on. Got too many things opened up. Page 17. Is that what you're talking it's, about? Yeah, I have another one instead of what's in the book. This is oh. the one that I've got. So you got the one in the book and I emailed this to you. But there's just a, a few things. So a lot of times people <clears throat> park in the driveway, right? They just pull up in the driveway. Uh, I was always told not to park in the driveway. That way people could park in the driveway when they came. And also if I'm parked on the street, if I needed to get gone, I could get out, right? I could, I could get out. I couldn't get, I couldn't, couldn't get cut. So, you know, I, I, you just have to be aware, right? I wouldn't be worried. I would be aware. Um, meeting the neighbors. If you called all the neighbors and you told the neighbors you're going to be there, right? If you see somebody out, especially when the weather's nice, introduce yourself to them. It's like door knocking. You're going to get, but also you're making a relationship. Also let somebody, I don't know if that's on here, but let somebody know where you are and what time you're going to be there and maybe even have a buddy. I'm going to call you. I have an open house from one to three and I'm going to call you by 3.30. If I haven't called you by 3.30, would you give me a call? Um, my husband and I had that routine, especially on my Thursday night open houses. That was a big deal because, you know, it was Thursday and it was at night. I never had a problem though. Um, check your phone, make sure it's, make sure your phone's charged. Make sure you have a signal. Um, turn the lights on, open the curtains, right? You want to do that anyways, because you want the house to get some natural light. Um, Make sure you know how to get in and out of the house. Oh, I tell you a funny story. This is a funny open house story. I got to this house a little early to do a Facebook Live and I wasn't early enough. And so I was kind of in a rush. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna do my Facebook Lives while I'm turning on the lights. And I knew there was a pool because I could see the pool from outside. I got lost in the house on Facebook Live because I couldn't find the door to the pool. The door to the pool was out of the garage, the back side of the garage. I mean, who would have ever thought that that's where the door to the... I'm walking around this house on this Facebook Live like, I don't know where the pool is, guys, but I promise you there's a pool. We got to find it. <laughs> so the, it was the craziest uh, Facebook Live. It was the best Facebook up until I did my Facebook Live series. It was the best, the best shared liked commented on because i messed up and people like it when you mess up right but make sure you know what the escape routes are and how to get in and out and turn on all the lights um and then take in only what you need like i didn't take my whole purse right i had a little bag that had my open house stuff in it i had a small wallet and my phone and my keys you know don't don't because if you have to leave your stuff and go talk to somebody in the kitchen, right? You can't take a whole big purse with you to go out in the kitchen, wouldn't that be weird, right? But I could I could just grab my phone, which had my wristlet thing that had my phone on it and take that with me. And that didn't seem, I know guys, that's not a big deal for you, but ladies uh, it is, but just take exactly what you need with you um, and keep it near you. Um, this says to put your purses in the trunk of your car uh, I just didn't take it with me. Um, and then, you know, make sure you don't leave the front door. You don't have to follow people around the house. Um, don't, don't leave, don't leave the front door so that people make sure you're seeing everybody that's coming in and going out. So you can account for the ins and outs. Um, uh, Carla, if, if your open house is light, uh, one of the things I've done before uh, is ask a person, would you like me to show you around the house? Yeah, I don't do that because then I'm going to leave the front door. Okay. So I don't want to leave the front door because if I'm showing somebody else around the house, then I am going to um, not see somebody coming in maybe. And I want to make sure that I see somebody coming in. So I would say, you know, um, you're welcome to walk around. And then if you have any questions, let me know. And then they have to come back to me. Right, that's the other thing. That way nobody could sneak out without me talking to them because I was always at the front door. So they couldn't they couldn't get out. Um, this is something ladies um, and guys too, but particularly even when you're showing a house to strangers, um, 
always let them in the house first. Don't let anybody be behind you. That's I, that, that is a really important, that was one that I had never thought of until I took a safety class and somebody mentioned that to me. Um, and the same thing, number nine, this doesn't really apply for me for open houses because I wouldn't walk them around the house, but it definitely applied when I was showing strangers a house, you know, that, that, that I hadn't met, I wasn't in relationship with. So like the very first time I showed a stranger a house, um, I didn't, I didn't go into closets and bathrooms with them. I just, you know, stayed in the hallway in the main entryways. So just, just, you just have to be aware. So I would go through this list of safety items. There's a safety item list in your um, packet as well. And just, again, I mean, the best, the best thing to, know, to remember is just to be aware. Um, not, not to scare you off, because I, I did, I can't tell you how many open houses I did, and I never had an issue, but I was always very aware and careful. Um, and there were a couple times where I scared myself. Does anybody ever scare themselves? Like, I scared myself a couple times, but that that's it. I also fell down stairs once. That wasn't, at least I wasn't on Facebook Live when I fell down the stairs. Yes, Ann. I just have a funny quick story. I did an open house and um, I showed up early to do a live and um, apparently the um, agent had told the owners the open house starts at one. So when I showed up at 1230, the alarm went off um, and I couldn't shut it off. I was calling everybody. No one came, you know, no one answered the phone, neither the agent nor the seller or anyone so the cops came <laughs> and um, it was pretty hysterical. They came and I was in the yard and I was, I was just like, well, I'm just gonna go ahead until someone turns it off. So I was grabbing my stuff out of my car and carrying it in and the cops came and he said, well, I can see you're an agent and you're carrying stuff in instead of carrying stuff out. So I think we're okay. But I was so embarrassed. All the neighbors were out on the street and um, the alarm was going off really loud and there, there were the cops. So it was funny. So. Did you ask the police officer, did he need to buy or invest in real estate? <laughs> I didn't, but I should have. I'll tell you I what, I never use that script, buy, sell, or invest in real estate, unless I'm trying to be funny or I'm in an awkward situation. But I have absolutely, um, well, I actually, I actually use that line on, on, um, telemarketers if I accidentally get accidentally answer a telemarketer call and they start in their script I'll say oh wait a minute you know I'm not really interested in buying what you have but I just have a quick question for you would you like to buy sell or invest in real estate they hang up on you if you do that <laughs> it's a good way to get rid of people that are cold calling you <laughs> someday somebody might say yes and then I'll have a referral for you guys uh okay so that's safety we talked about that all right, the good stuff. How do you get people to your open house, right? This is where we wanna be. In your materials again, and in, has anybody read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Gary gives us a seven level open house. Um, a seven level open house in the MREA. And the further you go down the open house list, the more success you're gonna have. So if you just put a sign in the yard, you might, and it goes in the MLS, you might get some people. If you put a sign in the yard with writers that say what time the open house is or some balloons or whatever, you might get a few more people. I had a helium tank, just so you know, a little helium tank, got it at Party City, red and white balloons. Um, the day of the open house, I put red and white balloons on four signs, usually. Um, sign in the yard, uh, sign in the yard of balloons and riders, and then directional signs at key corners. Okay. I would recommend that if at all possible, never do a level one or a level two open house. You're just having your business by accident. And you're probably just going to have two hours of good time to work on your business. Uh, if you want to have people that you meet, I would at least go this level, right? I would at least be getting some directional signs out so people can find you because you want those people that are drive-bys. Why do you want the people that are drive-bys? They probably don't have an agent. Exactly, Kelly. They probably don't have an agent. All right. So level four, then we're going to add flyers the week before. Um, email invites um, as well. So you're going to want to 
let your entire database know you're having an open house, right? Let everybody know how do you, you're going to say, well, they don't want to buy that house. How do you know they don't know, know somebody who might want to? Put it on your Facebook, right? Flyers um, in the PC library in the open house folder, there is the flyer that I mailed. I should have got green paper. I mailed this to the neighborhood. You guys all, um, if you're in coaching, you have access to Mojo. You can pull down the neighbors and you can mail them an invite to the open house. I picked my open houses on Monday, Tuesday, and by Wednesday morning, hold I had to mail that. Pardon? But I would mail my, oh, my invitations out to the neighbors Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday morning. By Wednesday morning, I pick my open house. Wednesday morning, I would um, mail the flyer out. I mailed it out on lime green paper in a lime green envelope with a handwritten address on it. I learned this from Shauna Brooks in the South office. Um, whenever I did it with lime green paper, people showed up with the lime green paper in their hand. They brought it to the open house. If I did other colors, they didn't show up. I, I don't know what it is about lime green paper, but it's magical. Shauna told me it was magical and it's magical. Uh, I think it's because it sticks out in your mailbox. So they open it. I don't, I don't know what the, it's up with that. Um, anyways, I would mail well, Carla, it. Carla, how do you, how would you go about something like that in, in today's market where you really don't, seems like you don't have that much time? Well, I made sure that I, I, well, it would be more difficult right now, but I would mm -hmm. have made sure. Now what, now, if I didn't get my open house till Thursday and I couldn't mail because the mail wouldn't be there, what can I do? How could I still get the invite to the neighbors, even if I did it the day before? Facebook. Well, Facebook, on their door. how do you get the neighbors at Facebook? Uh, you I guess you could. If there's a neighborhood Facebook group that you could post on, Joe, that would work. Mm -hmm. You had to walk the neighborhood and put it on their door. You walk the neighborhood. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Walk the neighborhood. Door knock. That's how you get to the neighbors. What else? How else can you get the message out to the neighbors the day before? Dan, you've been doing it. Uh, you use Mojo Car Neighborhood um, and uh, you can do door hangers. You can uh, certainly uh, do the door knocking. That's kind of what I've been doing, but you can also mail, like you said, the flyer. Yep. Mail a flyer, call them. Sometimes Mojo will give you email addresses. You could email them a flyer. Um, door knock. We're going to talk a little. Yeah, Armand. Oh, you're muted. Going on with what Dan does. Uh, you can, on your flyers, you can put them that you can find on the internet, clear plastic bags, and they got a hole cut out for a uh, doorknob. You can put your flyer in the bag and put it on the doorknob. Put it on the doorknob. Yep, absolutely. All right, level six is you get on the phone the morning before and remind everybody that you're having the open house. And we're going to talk about the scripts here in a little bit for calling um, the neighbors. And then your level seven, I never managed to have a level seven open house. This I tried and tried and tried, but the problem was the inventory wasn't cooperative. And I imagine a level seven would be really, really hard right now. And that would be to have the four open houses in the neighborhood um, at the same time. So that's a little challenging, but the further you can get down the list, I know from experience, the more people are gonna show up at your open house. All right, in your folder, and I am going to give this to you in the chat as well. There are scripts. Let me get there. If I can get this to open up. So if you didn't get this in your folder, in your email I sent you, it's right here, um, is the scripts for open house. And they're also there in your script folder, then your open house folder, and I emailed them to you as well. So let's, let's go through these really quickly. So this is your open house script calling the day before. Does anybody, I'll read it to you. Okay. Hello, my name is Carla with Keller Williams and we're holding an open house this Saturday at 123 Main Street for your neighbors. 
Uh, the reason for my call, I, I'll be quick, I promise. Uh, I just wanted to invite you to drop by the open house. Uh, we'll be open from two to four. And um, I never said that we would have snacks or refreshments because I never had it. Um, we know that about 90% of people that move into the neighborhood do it because they know someone that lives there. So I just had a quick question. And this says, do you know anyone that might be looking to buy a home in your neighborhood right now? I, my question was always, is there any chance that you'd like to choose your new neighbors? And they would laugh at me. They would, they would absolutely laugh at me. And I would laugh back with them and they'd say, yeah, how am I going to do that? And I'd say, well, if you would send anybody you'd like to be your neighbor to the open house, that'd be awesome. And if there's anybody you don't want to be your neighbor, don't invite them. And then they would laugh again. These are the people that would show up. What did I do when I made them laugh? Starting to create a relationship. Yeah, rapport. We had rapport. They wanted to see this crazy person because, you know, that was me. All right. And then uh, say, I'd say, uh, we have buyers who are interested in this neighborhood and uh, instead of saying it doesn't look like this is going to be a good fit for them, not all of them are going to be able to buy this house, you know, in this crazy market that we're in. So do you happen to know anyone in the neighborhood that might want to sell their home right now? So that's the script. That's all you do when you call around. That's it. You make it your own. Um, and then so that's that's the script for that. So let's do this real quick. Let's you guys have the script. Let's break in and see one two, three, four, five. Let's break into, uh, let's go 10 minutes, five minutes each person. And let's practice this, making this call around, a no, um, let's practice making a call around an open house real quick. So let's see if I create the room. Oh, Champelle can't be heard again. All right. Well, Champelle will be listening and I'll create, thank you, Champelle, for reminding me. I'll create that room accordingly. Um, Two, three, two, two. Okay, we'll do we'll do 12, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I might go a little bit longer because one room has three people in it. So just practice the script. Everybody has the script. Awesome. All right, here we go. All right, give me some feedback. How'd it feel making those calls? It went pretty smooth. Greg's really good at it. Oh, very good. Uh, That's very kind of him to say. I did like <laughs> where Dan went with the, he asked for the referral in the beginning, like, hey, who do you want to live by you? Then he circled back again and asked, well, you know, not everybody's going to be able to afford this this home, if you know anybody in a in the in the next price range down. So he looped it back good. And I love his affiliation with Homes for Heroes. He I think tying himself to that charity is is just very admirable and uh, something I hadn't thought of because I just wouldn't have thought of it. So I do give to charities, but I wouldn't have thought of throwing that into the chat. So I, I thought that was a nice touch. Hey, Greg, for those of you guys that haven't had the class, uh, the, there's an Ignite class on building your value proposition. And, you know, what we all have to do is find a way that we can stand out from the crowd, right? We figure out what our value proposition is. So you can think what that is. For instance, not only did I do um, 
open houses, but my, my target client base was seniors, um, right-sizing seniors. And so I became a dementia friend and, you know, had, so figure out who you want your client base to be and then figure out how, what is, is and it doesn't necessarily have to be a charity thing. It might be, you guys all have one. It is Keller Mortgage for your buyers. Keller Mortgage. Does everybody know, do, Greg, Kelly, Ning, you may not, do you guys know about Keller Mortgage? I had an introduction call with, uh, I believe it was Tara a few days ago, um, and it was a good conversation. Yeah, it's a big thing to say to buyers, and this is be something maybe you want to have a flyer at your open house about, right? We have a zero plus mortgage. All other lenders are going to charge you 1% loan origination fee. If you, you know, work with me as a Keller Williams agent, you won't have that. And if your loan is over $150,000, they're going to give you $1,000 to help pay for your inspection, whatever else comes up closing cost wise. So yeah, definitely think about your value proposition. I love that. So does everybody here feel like it would be pretty easy to call the neighbors, right? What is your limiting belief? When I say call the neighbors before you go to open house, what's the one thing that you think why you would want to do it? What's a limiting belief around that? I've got class before, before the Saturday ones. You, what'd you say, Armand? I've got class. Oh, before the Saturday. So when, when could you call them if you can't call them on Saturday? Well, if you can get, get them soon enough, you can call them a day or two before. Most likely, if you're having an open house on Saturday, you probably have had the open house at least on Friday, right? You knew about it on Friday? Yeah, yeah but there's other things that you have to do, like your lead generation. <laughs> isn't this lead generation? It's prospecting. It's prospecting. It is part of your lead generation. You got to honor your lead sources, too, don't you? Yeah, well, if you're going to do open houses, you just have a day set aside for it. It's time block. These are my open house calls. Anybody else? Anybody else have have a limiting belief around it? it, it they could eat into your time. I know mean, you got to set the you got to set the time aside to make the call. You could then run into some very very chatty people. <laughs> so you got to know how to wrap that call up and move on in a polite fashion. Yeah. How about, I would love to continue this conversation. Are you going to stop by and see me on Saturday? Love it. There's a variety of ways of doing it. Some people just are lonely and they want to chat. So They are, especially when you work with seniors, I promise. I had to keep up with the soap operas. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the neighbors, here's the thing. You're giving the, what are you giving the neighbors an opportunity to? Give them an opportunity to be nosy. <laughs> You're giving, the, you guys drive by and try to look in windows. I mean, come on, you walk the neighborhood and somebody's got their curtains open. You, you just naturally look, everybody wants to see what, you know, what the Joneses look like. So they get to come see. You also get them, you are actually giving them a chance to choose their neighbors in a way, right? If they know somebody from their church, work, school, whatever, that would like to live there. All right. So you can also door knock. Um, and then you also, like I mentioned, you want to let your database know, right? You're having an open house. Do they know anybody who might want to be looking in this neighborhood? Send them my way. That's a good way to get referrals. Plus, Ann has already left. But here's another thing I'll tell you. If you do an open house, do a Facebook Live, take your Facebook on a tour, right? Remember, does everybody know why? Or remind people that don't know why. Somebody tell the people that don't know why, why do we do it live, Facebook Live? Because it moves up in the algorithm. Yep, it enrounds the algorithm. So it's going to show up on all your people's pay, pay, page. So you're going to do a Facebook Live, take everybody on a tour, right? Um, what's going to happen after you do this three or four weekends? What are people, your sphere, going to start remembering about you? That you're thorough. That you're in real estate, first of all, mm -hmm. right? That you're thorough, absolutely, Armand. And that, that you're, you're active. It. Yeah. You're killing it, right? They're going to think you're killing it. They don't know that this is your listing or not. And it's fine. You know, you can, you, you can even, you need to say at the beginning of your Facebook live, you need to say, I'm here holding an open house at one, two, three main streets listed by, you know, whoever it's listed by. So never claim a listing that's not yours, but nobody's going to listen to that. They're just, they don't know our business. They're just going to see that you're actively doing your business and that's going to make them think you're killing it. All right. 
you're attracting leads. So you have to have the right mindset. Um, this is more about, you know, signage and you can look through all of those materials in the booklet. Um, right now, right now the dominant thing is kind of hard because the listings just aren't, you know, going to be there for a long time. But let's talk about signs for a minute. You may not have your own signs yet, and we don't like you to spend money before you make money. You might want to, well, you could do one of two things. You could ask the agent that you're um, having an open house for, if they have open house signs that they would like to put out, that's going to put their phone number out on the street and whatever. So you could do that. You can also go to Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, and you can get just red and white open house signs. You guys, I'm sure you've seen them at some point in time. They're like the corrugated with the H thing and they just say open house on them. Sometimes you can even find them that say open house with a time slot. Um, they aren't going to have your phone number or anything on it. They Some of them might have a place where you can write on them with a dry erase marker or Sharpie or whatever. It doesn't have to be fancy. You're just trying to get people to you. I'm not entirely sure a whole lot of people call the number on the sign, right? If they're coming to the open house, they're coming to the open house. So just, you know, just get some sign, signs out there and don't overthink it. It's better to have some signs out there that don't have your branding on them than to have no signs out there because you wanted to, whatever. You can also order signs. Um, and if we, I can make some recommendations of some really great people that do printed signs and, and they're awesome. But do, again, don't overthink the sign. The other thing I would have is, you know, you want to have your business cards on the table um, and make sure you have a way to collect their information. That's important. Whether you do the clipboard sign-in sheet or you do a QR code landing page, the important thing is that you have to have a way to follow up with the people, right? I've also seen this. This is awesome. So you guys have your buyer presentation and your listing presentation, your pre-listing presentation, right? From, if you're in the supported model, if you don't have it yet, you'll get it from the concierge service. Change the cover page on that to be the 2022 buyer guide and the 2022 listing guide, seller guide. And then take, create a QR code landing page to gather the information for people who would like to have the 2022 buyer's guide. Put it in the kitchen in an acrylic frame and take a picture of it, their information is gonna show up and then you have a reason to contact them. You can send that to them. So that I heard that at Family Reunion and I thought that was just brilliant. So you could put little acrylic signs with QR codes all over. Download my app, have a QR code for download my app. In the kitchen, have a piece of paper that says download my app with a QR code. Somebody's gonna download your app. Right. So think about the things that you can give people so that they see your name, um, that they see your name over and over again. So more on signs. Um, color, the balloons were really good. The balloons got really expensive, even when I was buying them at the dollar store. And that's why I ended up because I was doing so many open houses. I went and bought a helium tank at Party City and then my balloons were instead of being a dollar a piece, they were like six cents a piece or something. So um also if you're in a neighborhood i mentioned this earlier but just call the hoa and ask you know i mean you can you can what do they say that is you can do it now and ask forgiveness later or you can just call and ask it's your choice but your signs might disappear especially when you have your own signs that you've printed up and paid for uh, your signs might disappear if you don't call and ask permission, particularly in a neighborhood that has a no soliciting sign. You know, if, you know how when you pull a neighborhood, they have the sign for the neighborhood and underneath it, it says no soliciting. I call the HOA and ask. Um, here we can tell that this is dated material because we are not going to put this in the newspaper. <laughs> we, uh, we are going to do uh, mail outs. If you're asking, make sure, check the MLS and make sure that the listing agent did put it in. Um, remember the listing agent kind of is doing you a favor. This is not, do listing agents need open houses right now to sell their homes typically in this market? So you're doing, the, mostly the listing agent's doing you a favor by allowing you to hold the so, how, home, home open. Here's the other thing, because the listing agent is doing you a favor, what favor can you do back for the listing agent? Give them feedback. 
share the feedback that you get. So that bottom piece of the paper, if with my sign-in sheet, I scanned those, I took the top off, I cut them off and then I scanned the bottom sheet and I sent them to the listing agent. So if they wanted to give it to their seller, they could. Particularly if a listing agent has a listing that needs something done to it, you know, like animal smell, smoke smell, um, that they're having a hard time with their seller. If they get a good feedback from an open house, you might help the listing agent out that way. Um, also let the, this call them, right? Call them after the open house and say, I had 15 people come through. I had five people come through. Nobody came through, whatever. Give them or text them something, give them some feedback because what is their seller gonna wanna know? What they can do to sell it or sell it for top dollar. Yeah, and if the seller left their home for you to have an open house, do you think they're going to want to know what happened? And the other thing is, remember the sellers, the sellers don't know, the buyers don't know, other people don't know how our business works. I have Keller Williams on my hat and on my shirt, and I'm a Keller Williams agent. I go to an open house and it's, there's a Keller Williams sign out in the yard. They just assume we're all one thing, right? So they think, they think we're all one thing. Be, be really careful about that. The other thing that I always did is I asked the listing agent, do you have any limited agency people you're working with that might show up at the open house? Why would I want to know that? Because that buyer belongs to the listing agent, not to me. And I don't want to step in the way of that. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get sideways. And it might happen. They may send somebody to the open house, but it's limited agency, like it's their buyer. So you got to be careful there. All right. So there's some open house checklists. I recommend you go through those checklists and then make your own. You have to figure out what your system for open houses is. All right. So what are some ways that you can build trust? Remember, in order for somebody to work with you, what do they have to do? They have to know you, like you and trust you, right? So how can we build trust with these people when they're walking in the door? Just start a conversation. Ask, ask you know, ask questions, be curious right? Start a conversation. Ask them, what brings you out today? How many open houses have you seen? You know? Make, make a personal reference to maybe a sports team shirt. Uh, yeah. say, hi, say hello to their kids. If you have candy, ask permission to maybe give them the candy. If there's a little bouncy ball or something without them breaking crystal or something in the house, right? A little Kaj key type little giveaway to keep the kids entertained for a minute or two. The easy one is printed color sheets and three um, the little box of like three or four crowns. Think of think of the restaurants. The old school. I'm old. They don't, I don't know if they do this at the grocery at the restaurants anymore because everybody has their own little tablets for their kids. But when my kids were young and we went to the, the restaurant, they all got a coloring sheet and some crayons. So I have coloring sheets and crayons and the coloring sheets you can find them online. They're all about buying a new house right they're cute they have houses and things on them and you can get the little boxes of crayons like at the dollar store so i had those i always kept them in my car because when i was showing houses to families that had children i also like to give them to them as well so that's that's a good one how else armand just be careful on a hot day with those crayons actually you could make advertisement sheets and put your name in uh Telephone number on them. Yeah, that's what my color sheets had my logo and everything at the bottom. I, cool. I even left the key because it's Carla has the key. My logo has a key in it. And I left the key so they could color the key. So it became part of the color sheet. What else? What else could you do to build rapport? We talked about having the gift, right? Find out what it is that they need. Here's a big open house thing. Another thing I did about open houses, every Thursday I posted on my Facebook, let me know if anybody wants a list of open houses this weekend. If I put that on my Facebook on Thursdays and somebody says, hey, I'd like to have an open house list this week. Now, what do I know? 
they're not working with any market. Of yeah, they're they're my they're in my my Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And they want an open house list. Oh crap, they might be looking, right? For themselves or somebody else. That's gonna be my answer. Oh my goodness, are you looking for you? Somebody else? Who are you looking for? Absolutely, I'll get you a list. Where you want it for? All right. I like that idea. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. I was just saying I like that idea about advertising for open houses for the weekend it's super easy to print the report you're just going to go into your we're all indiana you're just going to go to end of, end of the mls and you're just going to search do a search and then you have to click on more and down down below that it'll say open houses you put the date range in and it's going to spit them all out it's it's super easy to get that so um what you're looking for is what are their needs and how can you help them, right? So that's what we're doing. And make sure we're asking lots of questions instead of telling, right? We want to ask, 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 because we want as much information from them as possible so that we know how, how to help them, how to help them. We've talked about a lot of this, um, getting them the information that they need. Um, and yeah, when they get done, is this the house for you, right? When they're coming back and they hand you the clipboard, say, is this the house for you? That's how I find out. And if they say, no, this isn't the house for me, what's that give me the opportunity to do? Ask a question about what type of house would be right for them. Yeah. What is it about this house that really didn't suit your needs? Well, I can, maybe I can find some other ones that would. And I love this question here on the right. Do you know anybody else who might like this house? What are we asking for there? Please. Armand, yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? All right. And then send thank you notes if you got their address or if you got their email, send thank you notes. Smart plans. So in the smart plan library, there are a ton of open house smart plans already set up. Go into the smart plan library, find the one that you like, make it your own, and immediately get everybody that you met at the open house on a smart plan. If they told you what kind of properties they were looking for and they're looking to be quickly, maybe they don't go on the smart plan. Maybe they're an opportunity. So for those of you guys that are new, when do we set up an opportunity in command? As soon as we have their information. Well, they, we get them as a contact. As soon as we have their information, we get them in. But when do they become an opportunity? When they say yes or maybe. If they say yes, they want to buy or sell, or maybe they want to buy or sell, they become an opportunity. Remember, opportunity is your funnel, right? This is your pipeline. Bye, Armand. Have an awesome open house. You got new questions to ask. All right, so that's your funnel. So it, they become an opportunity whenever they say yes or maybe. If they haven't said yes or maybe, then they're then they need to go on a smart plan so that you they're what they're saying to you then is not yes or maybe. They're saying, I'm just looking. Remember, they just walked in the front door and said, I'm just looking. Now we gotta have them on a smart plan so that we stay in contact with them. Yes or maybes, they go as an opportunity and we have to give them extra special attention because they're ready. They're ready. All right. So scripts. Need to practice, right? How did it feel when you guys practiced that script earlier? The other script, what other scripts around open houses might you want to practice? How about LP Mama? We went through that one earlier, right? That is in the script folder in your PC library. But asking those questions and making sure that we get that information and LP Mama is just a reminder of that. All right, so there's lots of scripts. Then we're going to follow up. We talked about that. Update your database. Follow up with the seller, the listing agent. Don't follow up with the seller if you're not the listing agent. You shouldn't be contacting the seller. Um, follow up with anybody that came. Visiting agents, remember, follow up with them as well. Um, and just remember who these people might be. They might be your future clients. So how, did you, how would you become a number one agent in a market? Now, Let's go this way. Is anybody here, we talked about farming last week. Does anybody here decide to farm a neighborhood? 
if you're farming a neighborhood and we were talking about selecting open houses, what open house should be your first choice always if you're farming a neighborhood? How about a house in your that neighborhood, right? If you're farming a neighborhood and there's a house, a listing, that should be your first shot at getting the, the open house. And that's probably when I would probably even think about asking a non-Keller Williams agent, could I have an open house at your house this weekend? I mean, all they could do is say no, right? But that gets you that opportunity because you're farming that neighborhood. All oh, right. See, I didn't know we could ask non-Keller Williams agents about open houses. You absolutely can. Like, I'm oh, not okay. sure going to say yes, but you can absolutely ask. Right. Okay. Well, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So anybody got uh, takeaways from today? What is your, what is your action item? Mine is going to QR code. QR code. Dan's doing a QR code. What'd you say, Joe? Yeah, I'm going to start doing that open house advertisement on Facebook, so... Okay, the Thursday, who wants a list of open houses? I love it. If you're going to have open houses be part of your lead generation strategy, what do you need to have? Phone numbers. Oh, phone numbers will help. How are you gonna get them? You have to have a system, right? You need to have an open house system that you do consistently. That way on Monday, you know what you need to do. Dan, what do you need to do on Mondays around your open houses? Um, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to put together your letters if you're going to send them out. First thing you need to do is find an open house, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you need to figure out what your system is. Are you going to mail out letters? Are you going to door knock? Are you going to figure out what your system is? So how many of you guys um, think you're going to make open houses part of your lead generation? Dan is, Joe is, Kelly is. All right, so work on your system, figure out what that looks like. All right, I usually run over. Look, I'm done like eight minutes early today. And it was my favorite topic. I'm not sure how that happened. You guys were awesome. Is there anything else I can help you guys with today? Dan and Kelly, I'll just tell you, um, I have offers. Um, I am talking to the client here in about 30 minutes. Um, you're going to be fine, Dan. We're not going to pin today uh, before your open house. Kelly, it may pin. I'm not sure. It may pin before your open house, but you can still have the open house. The seller has agreed. You can have the open house. Here's what happens when you have an open house on a property that's pending. I am so sorry this property just pended. This is where you, this is actually in your best interest. This is an awesome thing for you because now you've got other open houses and you've got a list of other properties in the area and you'll say, this one went fast. Um, let me help you so you don't miss out on the next one, right? So this one just pended. It doesn't matter. I held properties open. I did open houses on the weekends for houses that pended on Wednesday. And I would say it just pended. What's the definition of the word just? Open for interpretation. <laughs> it's just whatever it means to me or you, whatever. I just pended. Is Wednesday, did it just happen? Yeah. It did, right? So it just pended. I, I, again, Kelly, I'm not sure. I will let you know. I will let both of you know if we call best and final today. Um, I know what I'm going to recommend. Um, the best offer is Rocket Mortgage. <sighs> What are you showing me, Dan? I can't see it. The QR code. The QR if code, you, you got it. When you right click on that in command, uh -huh. there is actually a create your QR code in the oh, list. Oh, wow. Awesome. It has a cute little dinosaur in it. A dinosaur. Okay, that's fabulous. Yeah, so I'll, I'll let you guys know if we call best and final. I'm not crazy about the offers that I have in hand, so I'm going to recommend we call best and final, but... Um, and may I ask, how come it's not like kept open through the weekend? Or is that because of the market? We just go with, you know. Well, if they got if they got a cash offer that was twice the amount, why would I keep it open? It makes sense. 
Yeah, but I didn't get a cash offer twice. Yeah, I have three <laughs> really, really strong. I have three really, really strong offers. The strongest offer is just not my favorite because of who the lender is. Um, but um, I'm going to recommend the reason why I'm going to recommend that we go with best and final tomorrow is um, that it gives the people that have scheduled an opportunity and we might get a cash offer, which, you know, is, would still be a better offer than three that are financed. So, um, but I don't know, it's not my choice, right? Whose choice is it? The seller. Seller's, seller's choice. Yeah. So awesome. All right, guys. Well, have a fabulous Saturday. If you need me this weekend, just text me. I'm around all weekend. Perfect. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Champelle, you said you need me. You want to call me or what? <laughs>